in relationship, it's always good to have healthy boundaries, right? It's like good fences make good neighbors, right? Having good emotional boundaries and how a relationship operates, right? If your family is asking 10 times of you, then, then you, then I, uh, 10 times of you, then, then they help you on the, on the backside, right? This kind of acidic, um, give and take that. So you always have to have clear boundaries. I think it's a, a really, really important one. There's an awesome book out there, um, by Henry cloud called boundaries. That's a really good woman. I see patients in relationships. It may not even be a relationship with their spouse. It could be a relationship with family or friends where they're just kind of a parasitic element of people asking many multiples from that person, then that person's providing back. And there should always be a give and take, right? I always tell patients, like, when you play catch, I throw the ball, you throw the ball, right? Emotionally, there's a give and a take, and it's back and forth, and it's equal. When I start throwing the ball, you don't throw it back. I run back over, get the ball, come back, throw it again. That, that, that's, that's you know, very depleting, right? You miss the give and take. And so you got to make sure good, healthy boundaries are there. Also, with relationships, it's always better to try to restructure, kind of reboundify the relationship. Then just exit. I think exiting a lot of relationships is just, uh, it's an easy way out. It's, you know, you just go someone and, and, you're, and go on to your life. I think it's always better to see if you can repair or give people an opportunity to repair and get on the same page and see what happens from there. But either way, right, you have all these emotional issues, get healthy. If you're afraid to deal with these issues right now, put them on the back burner. Know you have to deal with them. Adjust your expectations of healing and try to get healthier so then you have better energy, better focus, better calmness to address whatever the problem is. Yep, this is great advice and it's uncomfortable and there are situations that are going to be intense, but I would encourage you just to go face first with those. Now, if you have trouble making eye contact with these people, some of that's related to brain chemistry too. I see a lot of people that when they get in a stressful situation, they just shut down. They look down, they look away, they can't face the person and therefore they can't fully express themselves. That's usually tied into low GABA. And so we can't measure GABA on the organic acids, but we can measure serotonin, we can measure dopamine, we can measure endorphins. So before you and I go into a few of these studies and solutions, you know, let's just give a little backstory on some of this. And so, you know, when I had gut infections down in yep. Texas, I had tons of anxiety. It wasn't me. It was not my personality. It was the gut bugs. And when we looked at my brain chemistry, my serotonin was low. My dopamine was low. I had issues to fully get myself motivated. I still pushed through, but I, I didn't wake up necessarily with that spark like I wanted. And so I know personally, and you and I've seen a thousand plus times clinically, the low brain chemistry problem, it's epidemic and it's only gotten worse. Even in the last 10 years, you and I have been looking at these labs. 